Hey, Cypher here, and boy do I have a show for you. Today we talk about the true horrors of war, in another wars you've never heard of. This time, the Russian intervention. Man, I've been waiting to do this for a long time. The Russian intervention is kind of my most studied subject in history. Trust me when I can say I can talk about this for hours, but I'm going to keep this fairly short. So most people have never heard of this war. Some people don't even believe it's true when they hear about it. For instance, President Reagan during a State of the Union address once said, Tonight, I want to speak to the people of the Soviet Union to tell them it's true that our governments have had serious differences, but our sons and daughters have never fought each other in war. And if we Americans have our way, they never will. Well, that is flat out false. The US really did invade Soviet Russia. Yes, we invaded Russia. Not only did we do so, but we basically helped oppose the newly created communist state in its formative civil war. From 1918 to 1920, the US, France, England, and several other countries invaded and directly fought Soviet Russia. Crazy, right? I have a bibliography a mile long, so I'll include a few books in the description. To start this story, we have to begin at the height of World War I, in Russia, 1917. The government was in turmoil. They were losing the war, and the people were out in the streets. By November, a coup took the government in what is called the October Revolution, creating the first real communist government in the world. After a few months of fighting in World War I, they signed a peace treaty with Germany and left the war. The remaining allies, including the newly joined United States, were worried that Germany would overwhelm them on the Western Front, since the Eastern Front no longer really existed. They couldn't decide what to do about Russia leaving the war. Now, a few other problems existed in Russia at this time for the allies. They had a whole lot of munitions that had been given to them during the war. We wanted it back, or at least not to be used by the Soviets. All also, they had thrown out a democratically elected Congress because it wasn't in agreement with the ruling Bolsheviks. Furthermore, this was communism, something the world was not prepared to accept. Things looked bleak. Eventually, it was decided to intervene in Russia by the British, and subsequently the rest of the Allies. Trust me when I say this, the reasoning behind this is convoluted at best. I wrote an article about this called The Study in Confusion, and I did so for good reason. After a lot of study into the British cabinet's decision-making process, I can firmly say they did not know why they were doing this, or even what they were doing. They just chose to invade for separate and personal reasons. By July of 1918, a full invasion was mounted into Russia. Yes, the Allies invaded their former ally. We took two northern provinces, three southern ones, and all of Siberia. I'll be told the Allies, including the US, held more of the old Russian Empire than the Soviets did in 1918. I mean, look at this picture. It's of the Allies parading down a conquered Russian city. There are a lot of ironies to be drawn from this war. Red Army troops engaging in a shooting war with the US in a way that the Cold War after World War II never saw is probably the greatest, though. One battle in particular, which I talked about in the last video, signifies the worst of it, called Peace Day's Bloody Battle. You can click the corner to go and see that. We supported the white generals fighting the Soviets, as well as propping up other opposing governments in the North. The anti-communism purpose of the war was clearly violated since one of those governments was communist itself. In fact, all the purposes of this war were violated horribly, at one point or another. It's true we held the munitions while we were there, but left them when we left. We never started another Eastern Front with Germany for World War I, and didn't even stop fighting in Russia after World War I had long ended. The troops fighting couldn't even figure out what they were doing there. One soldier wrote, We were forgotten by our own country, ignored by the one for which we were fighting, and drenched in belligerent blood for a thankless people. Over the frozen chaos of Russia, we carried our dead. They had no clue, and the people making the decisions didn't either. The whole thing became a bloody mess. Battle after battle was waged in the frozen wastes, and nothing came of it. No reinforcements, and no meaningful purpose was given, ever. After a long time, the US completely pulled out in 1920, though the Japanese kept fighting the Russians for a few more years. There was no rhyme or reason to the retreat, only leaving with our tails tucked between our legs. This was a defeat. 
we lost this war in a more meaningful way than many talk of Vietnam. I can do an episode on real US defeats, but suffice it to say, we were the losers in this war. The commies beat us back, and we ran away. This war didn't just end with the US tacitly accepting Soviet Russia. We tried to deny their existence for years. In fact, we didn't recognize the Soviets until 1934, 14 years after the war. We also tried to create a trade embargo against them. One of the original reasons for creating the FBI was to stop communist movements within America. In many ways, the Cold War started long before the end of World War II, as a response to this war. We may forget this war, but in the words of Soviet Premier Khrushchev, the Russian people remember that in the hard times of the October Revolution, US troops led by their generals landed on Soviet soil to help the White Guard fight our Soviet system, and they were not the only ones to land. Land. The Japanese landed too, the French landed in Odessa, and the Germans advanced as far as the Soviet Caucasus. The armed forces of the bourgeois Poland seized Kiev. The British too landed their forces to fight us. Many European capitalist countries, as well as the United States and Japan, sent their troops into an offensive against the young Soviet state in an effort to strangle our revolution. So this small war determined the fate of US-Russian relations for years before most US citizens even think it matters. It was mired in confusion and dissolution. One author used this famous poem to capture the true nature of this tiny little war. It goes, And we are here as on a darkling plain, swept with confused alarms of struggle and flight, where ignorant armies clash by night. So thanks for watching. Tell me what you think about this subject. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.